Have you ever had met somebody who uh, who was lacking in people skills? I mean, they got a good message, but they but they come across like a bull in the china shop. A John came out looking. He looked like like a wild man, and he came out and he said, "You're all sinners, and you need to repent." A little bit later, on Jesus would show uh, and travel around, and he would tell the same message, but he would say it in a way that that drew. Uh, Something special out of people, a love. And then later on, Peter, one of his disciples, and Paul would, would struggle together as to how to present this message of repentance and forgiveness to a world that had never even known uh, the idea of a God, of one God, and a God that comes uh, to help people. Lots of different ways we could say repent and sin no more. I like the song where it says, people get ready. Get ready because there's something important that's going to happen. If you remember nothing else this week, remember the messages to repent, to, to make a choice, to change our wicked ways and live a... And then the other challenge is to live like saints. How many of you are a saint of the church? Saint of God. Well, so everybody here is, is sinners, uh, sinners in need of. Actually, the scriptures say we are all saints. God has forgiven us. Jesus Christ has paid the price, and we are to live holy lives and godly lives of a saint. Now, you got to you got to see yourself as a saint before you're going to act like one. Okay, uh, instead of every morning getting up and saying, "Oh, me, a sinner." We've already done that part. I'm a terrible sinner and I've been baptized by Christ and so for the forgiveness of sin. Every day is, have I been good and God? Have I lived in preparation for my heavenly home? So I want you to remember the, the choice of repentance. It's a choice. God's not going to make you change anything. But if you do change and choose a life of godliness, then live like saints. Get ready for heaven every day of your life. In the Psalter we're reading today, I love the imagery there in verses 10 and 11. It says, steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Can you imagine? Steadfast love and faithfulness. They, they come together. You got the, you got the picture? Stead, they, they're, they're together. And then it says, righteousness and peace will kiss each other. If you, if you were like, if the little kids, they'd say, that's silly, Pastor Joe. But righteousness and peace are intimately connected in our lives. But then I like the image of, uh, of heaven and earth. It says, faithfulness will spring forth from the ground. The psalmist is saying that we are the ones that need to be faithful, raising our hands and our hearts to God. But then he says, righteousness will look down from the sky. It's the image of a cross to me. You've got righteousness and faithfulness and love and peace among brothers and sisters of Christ. You've got faithfulness coming up from the ground and, and Righteousness looking down. Can you see the image? That's what that's what every day is. Every day is an opportunity uh, to join righteousness and faithfulness and, and love and peace and all that together among all of us. And it's always to be in the honoring of God. That we're always raising ourselves up and raising others up to Christ. Uh, so that we also experience the love and the righteousness of God poured out. Got that in I want to tell you about a, a person I met that prepared for Christmas, prepared for Christ, prepared her family, one hot dog at a time. You ever, have you ever thought about the benefit of a hot dog? I know, we got all our help. My wife's a nutritionist, I'm a bit in trouble. Okay? <laughs> Let's just for a minute 
you know, just bear with me, you know, and don't don't think about all the, the other things, but just the benefit of going with someone to get a hot dog, sitting down and, and talking good stuff, you know, just, you know, a good hot dog and good friends and just, it's just good. Well, this past week we celebrated the life of Rosalind Anderson and her grandchildren got up and they said, our grandma loved us so much that every time we got together, we went over high dogs. And they said, every time. He said, they all remember going up and seeing the star and trying to see if the tiger would move. And they all said, I think it's moving. And most anything that their mamas and daddies said they couldn't do, they managed to be able to do it with their grandma. There's a lot of things in our life where we think that what we said today or what we didn't do tomorrow or, or that it doesn't matter. But every day we choose to be godly or we choose otherwise. Every day we, we live in preparation uh, for heaven or we don't. And every day we can be faithful, faithful in our all of our relationships, our earthly relationship, but most importantly, faithful to the relationship we have with Christ. A covenant that is eternal. To a God that is steadfast and loyal to us. A God that comes to us when we cry for Him. Who saves us from, our own, from the problems of our own making. And gives us always an opportunity to start over fresh. Never asking us to do something that he hasn't given us the ability and the strength to do. Now that's the kind of God that we're talking about today. Get ready to be in the presence of God forever. Now, what's the most important thing you're planning this week? Whatever it is, it's not as important as planning to be with God forever. We may think it's important, but as Rosalind's life and, and, and sudden death reminded me, I can be talking with someone on Sunday afternoon. I can be, be making plans to share the stories of Roanoke Valley and, and life with, with family from a, a lady who is, who is loved and, and been loved. And then there's no more opportunity. The next day I wake up and she has woken up in heaven and we no longer have that opportunity. Every day is precious. Every day the steadfast love and faithfulness can meet in our lives. Every day righteousness and peace can, can embrace in an intimate way. Every day faithfulness in our lives can raise us above the expectations of the world, which frankly are not that high. The world expects everybody to, to be selfish and greedy and careless. But we are careful. We are full of concern and love for those in our lives and those that are strangers. We bring them together. And the righteousness of God is always coming down, shining from heaven, a light in the darkness, colors in the morning that, that draw us an emotional response. Isaiah prophesied that the Messiah would be heralded uh, by deliberate preparation. And John the Baptist spent most of his growing up years preparing for one message, repent for the kingdom of God is here. Be baptized for the forgive, by water for the forgiveness of your sins. All of his choices, all of his life, all of his faithfulness was for that one message. And people listen. We've got, each of us, one message. One message for the world. And they're either going to listen or they're going to ignore us based on the choices we make the lives that we live and the faithfulness we have to the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
Do you want people to listen when you share with them the words of salvation, the words of reconciliation and love and hope? Do you want them to embrace it? Well, we got to start right now. We got to start right now being careful what we say, careful what we do, always <coughs> binding together with cords of love that can't be broken. I'd like you to just remember one other thing that I discovered about my sister Rosalind. She's a good example this week of preparation. Uh, I wish I could have been around here when her, she and her husband Andy had all the, the shops there in the Crossroad Mall. But her grandchildren again reminded me of something special that I wanted to share with you. They said that uh, because they had a card shop, uh, Rosalind had this rather quirky thing of sending cards for every holiday. I mean, she sent it for probably every holiday that there was. And in every holiday, whether it was Grandparents' Day or whether it was Memorial Day or whether it was birthdays, every card had a dollar bill in it. They said they, they wished that there were more holidays, you know, in the year so that Grandma would send another card. Because every special day was something special for her and her family. Every day when they opened up the shop, she and Andy saw it as a special day. Not only to be in business, but to be in fellowship and relationship with the people around them. So whatever we do, wherever we go this week, remember that there is a choice. A choice to be godly and faithful. A choice to live in preparation for heaven. And a choice to be faithful. This is the message of the gospel. It's the message of God's spirit to each and every one of us. It's simple. Did, did you follow it okay? You got it? You got a choice. What else you got? You got to live, live a certain way. If you want to know how, just call me up and I'll give you all the, all the list. Don't ask me if I've done them all. But I got the list. And most of all, be faithful. You notice the Bible doesn't say successful or even good at it. Just be faithful. That's what's important. People get ready. Because heaven's right around the corner.